exactly. this kind of became like a reading each other's recommended five star reads kind of thing. Funny. They just licked you. <laughs> I feel like I'm like going to a party in this dress. I, I mean, think. is this not a book party? Is it? Oh my God. Support. Support. Don't talk to me while I'm texting. It's rude. <laughs> oh, is that what your mom says? It's all a part of me, and that's who I am. Hey guys, Hi. it's Melissa, and I'm here with my friend. Oh, I'm so sleepy. My name. Ogin. Ogin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ogin and I recently went on a book date. Um, if the video is up already, I'll like link it with that like mm, I thing. Uh, but card. it's a card. A card. Sorry. A, a card. Yeah, it's called a card. Oh, little okay. I. Reference our conversation on geeks versus nerds. <laughs> ah! <laughs> just kidding. No, okay. But yes, ah! we want to show you the book haul of all the things that we got. Well, we were in Barnes and Noel. Well, first now. That plane's really loud. I know. Is that like a, a, I think we're in a, a film back. thing? Yeah. Hold for sound. Yeah, yeah, that's what you say when like there's like sound that's like interrupting the take uh, so that you would get like a good. Uh, we, need a, we need a boom mic. Is that what it's called? I have one, but that <gasps> takes a lot of effort. So we're not going to do that. Uh, yeah, so we're going to give you a book haul and then we'll get more into what's happening in the video. I just have my books on my lap because I threw my bag away. I recycled this is, it. This is the bag. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That was like the most me. LA thing. It's like, I didn't throw <laughs> it away. I recycled it. I'm like, don't come at me. <laughs> no, it's okay. Wait, do you want to go first? Do you want to like switch the books that we got for each other? So I bought Melissa a book and she bought me a book. It was a book date. I mean, <laughs> how could you not though? Yeah, it's the best Are platonic date ever. Are you friends if you haven't bought each other books? Dang, actually, you're the first person I bought a book for. Really? Yeah. Well, I feel Usually, really I just like re-gift books. I'm all like, hey, I didn't really like this. When I was I in like high school, it. that's how my grandma and I would hang out. I mean, you've met my grandma. They're like, we're super guys. big readers in my family. So we, my grandma and I would literally go to Barnes and Nobles and like browse around and read and stuff for a while and then like buy books. Mm. It's the best. I, Shout out to my grandma. Yeah, she's so cute. I've never bought books before at a Barnes and Noble. Mm -hmm. I bought them. <laughs> I don't know, like, that's the first time you've ever heard of Art Snowball. I know. I was trying I to know, think. What's that place called? Okay, I was trying Ariel. to think of what it was. <laughs> and then, because, like, I've only bought books online. And, like, from, there. like, um, used bookstores. Which is a lot stores. more sustainable. Thrift stores. Uh, and then, yeah. yeah you know, I was okay. protecting the environment. Like, excuse yeah. me. I care about the environment, too. <laughs> but, like, Barnes and Nobles, it's, like, not just a place. It's a way of life. I mean, isn't it not a lifestyle? If you're not sitting on the floor reading, why are you even there? <laughs> I just don't get clip of you sitting on the floor. <laughs> I mean, there are plenty of those. Okay. Tell us what you got and why. Um, so I when I first went to Barnes and Noble, because it was my first time. No, it was my first time with uh, Melissa. So we walked in, and apparently we had to get drinks, or it didn't happen. And so <laughs> it's a date. You can't have a date without drinks. So we went to Starby. <laughs> Starby. Starby. Star baby. Drinking tea. <laughs> Anyways, um, so Melissa went, and she was showing me her favorite author. Her favorite author had a pile, and so she was showing me from the pile. And adjacent to that <laughs> was mangas. <laughs> and uh, mangas your girl are is a geek, apparently. I am a, a geek for reading mangas. I used to watch anime when I was little. However then, you self-identify. Like, I don't want to put I, geek on you. I have accepted my geekness, and so okay. I am an awkward person who likes fan dumps. <laughs> <Stand. laughs> And so this was um, one that I was reading, but I couldn't find the rest of it. Like it, I was looking for it, but I couldn't find it. And so we found it at Barnes and Noble. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I was reading this and it's the cutest thing ever. It's called A Man and His Cat. And so it's so cute. It's such a cute, heartwarming manga. And Melissa got it for me. She's like, do you want it? And I was like, ah, I don't know if I want to spend money. And she's like, I'm going to get it for you. And so it's mine. And she spent more it. money on me. <laughs> <laughs> I, you see, that's the thing about me. I like to spend money on other people, but when it comes to me, I'm all like, dude, do I really need? That's where we're on a journey to self-love. <laughs> yeah. I'm all like, my toxic trait is spending money on people. 
Listen. More than me, I guess. It's a sweet treat to have, but you gotta value uh, yourself as much as you know it. Apparently, by other people. I should. I. That's biblical. I mean, yes. I, I say yes. I can't think of the verse, but I'm like, I feel like it would be true. Yeah. yeah. Love your neighbor as yourself. Hey. Okay. How are you gonna love your neighbor if you don't love yourself? <laughs> Amen. Just like hashtag that verse. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one that was the official date book yes this is a date book but that you is. got what three more yeah so then um, i didn't know you got two epic christies i thought you just got one listen i have no, not an addiction but a love a love that burns with a passion yeah am i obsessed i don't think <laughs> i'm obsessed i mean maybe you're obsessed with how much i'm obsessed okay <laughs> stop obsessing over it the second book i got was <laughs> kind of <laughs> It's not embarrassing, but I'm not like, I did the thing. And so I was writing uh, some fan fictions for Twilight. And I was like, you know, I have no idea what these people look like. And so <laughs> it's been so long. I read Twilight when I was in high school. Oh my gosh. Um, uh, it was like before 2000, like maybe like 2009, 2010. I was reading, the way I got into it is my English teacher, <laughs> if you're watching this, hello, um, I can't remember her name, she was reading the first Twilight book, but she kept skipping around, like she'd read it for like 15 minutes, she'd read it to the class, yeah, yeah, of each class, and so, but because she was reading it to each class, she didn't remember where she stopped for every class, and there was like six classes, either three classes or six classes, we, we started off with three classes, and then we switched to six classes, like midway through my, uh -huh. like, th through my four years there and so I don't know how many classes I was at that time but I got upset that she was like skipping parts and like rereading the same parts so I'm all like forget this I want to treat it myself anyways I ended up reading all of them <laughs> and so it was very interesting to just like immerse myself in like a different world yeah escapism at its finest it's a solid fandom, the Twilight yeah. series. I, mean, yeah. I feel like we've all been through that phase. <laughs> I mean, in hindsight now, I'm all like, mm, I don't know about those last few books and like relationships that were in there. And uh, some things were toxic. And as a high school girl, I did not realize what true relationship might look like and what true love was and how people actually are. Because true love is life. the guy <laughs> sneaking into your bedroom and watching oh, you sleep, sleep at night. Uh, I kind of was not much. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh I'm all like, oh, so you're obsessed with me. <laughs> I can't. Ah, so, uh, anyways, yeah, no, Fair that better. was my thing. I, I'm working through this. I'm all like, someone doesn't have to be obsessed with you to love you. <laughs> to to be loved. I am just thought, like, uh. But I mean, there's a trope for that. Yeah, and I'm all like twenty dollars well spent. <laughs> I dig it. Ah. And now the pièce de résistance. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I went through this phase where I was like reading murder mysteries left and right, and I remember I was on a train when I read my first murder mystery, which is funny. Oh, I love that. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I don't know why I keep screaming. Anyways, I was on a train when I, I guess that's like my signature thing. Ah! I love it. I love it. <laughs> At the beginning of the video, you're like. Ah! Um, and I read my first murder mystery, and it was by Agatha Christie, and it was called Towards Zero. And mm -hmm. it was very fun. I did, I think I was, it was the first time I was shocked that I didn't know who did it. And when it was revealed, I was like, no. Oh, I love that. No. Yeah. No. How? Anyways, it was, it was very enticing. It kept me engaged. I was also on vacation. And so it was like a nice escape from escape. <laughs> Ah, because I am an introvert and I was like I'm around people and I just need to be by myself and this Facts. is the only way I can do it and no so <laughs> ever since then I fell in love with Agatha Christie and so I got this book this is available at the library but I don't go to in-person libraries I just get all my library books online and read it, it with my to have, like like feel of a book like there's nothing like having a book in your hand yes and the smell of it I'm sorry. <laughs> and the smell of it like, respect i get it i mean come on guys if you don't if you're not smelling books are you even doing it right mm -mm. no anyway. <laughs> i sounded really wrong but in the best way, ah, so. it's wrong if you're not doing it <laughs> don't do drugs okay I smell books instead we should put that on our shirt <laughs> Whenever old games merch drops, that'll be uh, cocaine, no way. Old books, yes. Yes. 
shirt number two. But this is like a new book, so I don't know. Have you started either it of those? Yeah, I started this. Um, I actually thought it was like, <laughs> like uh, I want to say his name right. So it's like a Hercule Poirot series. But it's actually, it includes somebody else. And so I'm all like, oh, I didn't know that. But I'm still Hercule intrigued. Hercule Poirot? What is that? Maybe it's Poirot. Hercule Poirot. It's this character that um, Agatha Christie wrote a series on. Oh, okay. And so he's like a detective and he solves mysteries. Oh, fuck. And, but he's not like a, his nose to the ground detective. He's all like, I'm just going to sit here and think about <laughs> everything, all the okay. clues that we've gathered. And that's how I'm going to solve it. So he's not like, you think that I'm a hound dog. And just like, you know, looking for clues, looking at dirt, tasting, I don't know, things off the floor. He's all like, there's a place for that. And I am not in that place. So not old school Sherlock, new school Sherlock. Yeah. And it's funny because in one of the series he encounters like a detective just like that. And he's Mm -hmm. all like, good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's got to do it. I mean, yeah. (laughs) And so he's all like, I'm going to just like use my tiny little gray brain cells. Love it. Love that for him. Anyways. Yes. And so this one I've been trying to read every time I check it out from the library. I never got through it. So I'm like, I'm just own it so I can take my time and savor it. Love it. So I restarted it and I'm like 25 pages in. Not what I expected. But Agatha Christie has not disappointed me yet. So just shift in perspective and then I'm going to like devour this. I love it. Trust. I have not started this. It is it's a big boy. A thick thick baby and oh, so goodness. it's all it's 50 50 short stories on my favorite detective Hercule Poirot if I'm saying his name wrong just let me know and so I read some of the short collections already but like the library doesn't have all of them so I just got the book because oh why would I not I love this guy yeah. and so I haven't started it yet but I'm excited and looking forward to it Speaking of, this is not sponsored, but the way that we read library books about going to the library is we use an app called Libby. It's amazing. Mm. I will link it down below so that yeah. you, all you need is a library card and then like you get access to all of the ebooks and e audiobooks in your library's. Yeah. Library's library. Your library's library. <laughs> yeah. No, it's the best. You have the digital library. Okay. Uh, I'll do mine. I have a slightly smaller haul and half. Uh, two-thirds of the books are pink because I am who I am um but my book date book is The Happy Place by Emily Henry which yeah. is the author that she's talking about which actually is not my favorite author but it's Ooh. one that I love um and this is her newest book that just came out oh gosh um I have finished it already I think I will talk about it in a later book Later book, in a later video. <laughs> she finished it in like a week. I have week. thought. I was really excited. Like the whole reason that I wanted to go to Barnes and Nobles and do a book date with Olkin is because I wanted this book, and the rest are just like ha- happy circumstances. Should um, we talk about how the book date came to be? You don't remember? I, I don't remember. remember. I'm gonna tell you what happened. <laughs> no. Literally, Melissa posted something like, "Oh, I want right. to go on a book date with somebody or something like that." Like, and I'm take all me like, on a book date. "When are you free?" And I commented this, and then so then it's true. I don't know. I never read Facebook comments after, <laughs> but she texted me. She's all like, "I'm free on this day," and I'm like, yeah. "Bro, let's do it." Like, don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sometimes people will post and be like, "Oh, I'll totally do that with you," but they're like, "Not really serious." Gosh, I'm totally serious. Yeah. Like, well, I was, I was like, pop, not, not serious, but then I'm all like, but I would I totally do serious. this. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I, the thing is, I only go half-heartedly because I don't know how committed people are. But when I commit, I commit. I, I am an actor. It is my <laughs> job to commit. So. <laughs> ah, and so, yeah, no, that was like my first book. That first was book perfect. Date? First book. Like, I've been on thrift store dates where I got books, but this was my first, like, exclusive book date. Fair, fair, fair. Mm-hmm. I dig it. This is, I mean, it was not my first, but it was it was one of my favorite non-solo book days. I mean, we did go to our happy place. We did. Although, I have thoughts. Oh, okay. That's, that's, that's a whole other thing. Okay, but the first book that I saw when we walked in there, actually, was all of these, like, new um, covers for Jane Austen's book. Oh, yeah. And this is actually my favorite Jane Austen book. It actually, well, okay. It's probably neck and neck with... Um, Pride and Prejudice. This is Persuasion. And the cover was pink, so I had to get it. It's so pretty. I want to go back and actually get the rest of her books that they, in this, like, new design. Yeah. But, um, I've read this, like, a million times. It's a five-star read for me, so. 
You can borrow it. She's looking at me, and so now I'm all like, oh, okay, I guess I guess I'm gonna be reading this book. Well, that's the thing. So like, we should get into um, segue because segue. we both picked out books for the other to read. So yeah. this kind of became like a reading each other's recommended five star reads kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, Olgin recommended that I read Shatter Me because, because he had been like annotating it. It's amazing. Um, I'm gonna just tell you that right now. So the thing is, I had not wanted to read this book, and I wasn't gonna fair. read it. So I, I read it be, because of her recommendation, because she liked it so much, mm -hmm. and like, you know, what better way to break outside of your comfort zone than to do a recommendation from a friend? Yeah. Um, but I would really like to get into <laughs> what, how, I think we should say, um, what we would rate the books that we read, maybe like a recap, but like no spoilers, um, and then what we thought of it. Okay. Uh, oh, and so we don't actually don't have the physical copy. Actually, I might have it. I lent it to a friend. So the book that I recommended to Olgeen is another Emily Henry book, and it's called Book Lovers. Book it's my lovers. absolute favorite book by her. I mean, it's so good. It is. Uh, but but let's start with Shatter Me. First of all, why don't you say why you recommended Shatter Me? <laughs> and what what you actually have rated it? Did you rate it on Goodreads? I looked back. I did not, and oh, so it's funny. funny. But I remember that it's a book that always stayed with me. It's a book that I love the most for what it was at the time. I like think, out of all of the I read writers' it in books? high school. And oh so wow! I actually that's the only book I read by that um, author be okay. because I think that's the only one she had out at the time. Oh. I may be mistaken, but it's the only one that I saw. And so I read it, and I remember it was the first book that described the things that it described in the way it described it. And so, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's no other way to describe that. Yeah, <laughs> so, I totally feel that. The thing is that, like, it doesn't just say I was sad, or, like, it doesn't just yeah. say the room was blue. Like, it goes into, like, vivid imagery. Yes. And I'm like, this is, like, what? Like, I understand this on, like, a infant level. I don't know what mm -hmm. that means. It's just, like, at my base level, this makes so much sense. And mm -hmm. I don't know why people have not said things this way before. Yes. She's and why, why have we been living in a world where things are just so black and white? <laughs> and so. That part. It just opened up my, it, like, if you're someone who loves words, this is a book for you. Agreed. So wait, so what would you rate it now if you could read it? So I read it again. <laughs> I finished it in, like, Yeah, four, after I finished it, and she, after she finished Book Lovers, she went back and read it. I, because, like, we were kind of, like, I was telling her a little bit about Book Lovers, and so I was like, where are you reading the book? And she's like, I'm reading this part, and I'm like, ah. Oh. I don't remember that part. And so then I was like, let me just let me just look at it real, real quick. Very, very, very. Anyways, I read the whole thing. <laughs> Whoops. And so it was, at the time when I first read it, I would rate it a five star. Now that I, it's like 10 years later, mm -hmm. I am a bit more adultish. And so <laughs> I have more books underneath my belt. I would rate it a four star. Okay. But I also, in my heart, okay, for story, for story. Four star. But for like the way of writing, five star always. Fair. Okay. I would say, wait, first I'm going to show off my shirt. Sorry, I forgot to say that. SAG supports the WGA. That's why I'm wearing this oversized t shirt. That's important, people. Okay. Um, I would rate this three and a half stars. Uh -huh. And if we're saying like for the writing, like the writing for me, five star for sure. Like this, the way that this writer writes, it's like so poetic and beautiful. Like literally all of the like annotations that I have, it's just marking like phrases that she's written that I thought were so beautiful. Like instead of saying like she blesses, bl blushes, she's like, I catch the rose petals as they fall from my cheeks, as they float around my body, as they cover me in something that feels like the absence of courage. <laughs> What? Like, who sees the world like this? It's so amazing and, like, beautiful mm -hmm. and poetic. Um, story, like, if I was just rating it based on story, I would mm. probably give it, like, a two. Ugh. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. I, if the book had stayed in the area that it started in, I think I would have loved it. Like, I, I really like the beginning. Um, I actually really did like the main character. Wow, oh, why am I blanking on her name? Juliet. Juliet, I like Juliet. I like, I feel like I can identify with her. Like I found her, some of her thoughts relatable. Um, and I thought it was interesting the way that like the author purposely writes the book to seem a little bit more chaotic and then like progressively makes it less chaotic as like Juliet's character develops, uh -huh. which is intentional. Like it actually like, um, 
there's like a little brief that the author writes in the mm -hmm. beginning of the book to let you know that it's intentional oh. um and it's got i think one of the things that you really liked is it got has like some of those like strikeouts oh and, my like, gosh just strike marks out. and things it's um, like, which i think he's is really clever strike out dangerous yeah, yeah no like, I'm it's all like, uh, <laughs> when you're trying to use common sense and you're like, uh. Well, it's like, because it, it makes sense with the way that, like, you edit yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you don't normally tell people exactly what you're thinking. Ooh, um, you always, like, self-edit and, like, so <laughs> she thinks she does it all the time, but she doesn't. Uh, I've seen her hold back. <laughs> but, but, so like, she I knows that I hold back, though. But that's, like, I mean, because we're friends. <laughs> like, I know what, you know, you can tell. Uh, but like, but that's, that's such a normal thing and that's really relatable. Mm -hmm. And I like really like that about it. Mm -hmm. But like the book got really political really fast. And I like, which this is, this is like, a, I would say like a post-apocalyptic like storyline, like dystopian. So like, I feel like that happens a lot because like a, in a lot of dystopian like series, I feel like the author feels a need to tell you like, the world has gone to crap because of this. Like, if we'd fix this and this and this, and, like, we let this slide, and because of this, everything sucks. And it's like, we know. Yeah. <laughs> like, thank you. I read Hunger Games. I know. Yeah. You know? So it's Hunger just, Games, which is another great series. Great series, but also, like, it got very political. Especially in the second and third book. Like, I... Be... Uh, I'm gonna say a little secret. Okay, well, you're Team Gale, so that's... <laughs> I will say that sometimes I just like skim over the parts that are like political because I'm all, like it. I mean, sometimes same. it doesn't add to the story. Same, but see, but, so. the, but this I feel like it was like eighty percent politics. Mm. Whereas like and so like like for me okay, normally okay. if like the romance is really good, like also like Ooh, the main people. guy Adam uh, loved him sweet. Well, I can't. Okay, that's a spoiler. I can't see what type of guy he is, but like. I liked their connection in the beginning and like how that developed, but like that wasn't like super central to the story except for the gosh, I'm like how to talk about it without giving spoilers, except for the thing that happens that like is central to like her the way that she interacts with the world. Um oh, that's a great line. But like it it seemed like the author was more concerned with like letting you know the rules of the world, why it was the way that it was, why it shouldn't be the way that it was, and like how to fix it. Which I think if you're looking for that in a book, then like that, it would be great. But like, I thought, the way that I heard about this book, I thought it was going to be more of like a, a YA romance. Uh, and it's not. <laughs> it's definitely not. Even the like, the like, summary on the back. I don't know. Maybe I just like misled myself with like false expectations, mm -hmm. but um, but yeah, I would I would give it a three and a half. Huh. I don't know if I read any Yahweh romance. There's I read a lot of. Why ah, did I say Yahweh? Ah, so, so you know, Christian romance. My first love. <laughs> yeah. You already know my first love. Anyways, my first love. Um, no, I don't think I. I've only read like dystopian books, which is probably oh, why it didn't seem weird to me. That makes a lot of sense. And see, I don't gravitate towards dystopian. I only gravitate yeah. towards dystopian. Well, you're like... <laughs> and so maybe you're, that's you why... You're a former goth kid. A goth kid? <laughs> yeah, no. ah! I have never worn black. All black. Oh, well, goth is a way of life. I mean, I guess. I know, it yeah. could be. Well, is I more do of a goth like, than you are. I do like sad, tragic books sometimes. I'm all like, ah. Uh, What's more goth than that? I don't know. <laughs> Whereas I, I am a big, like, proponent of escapism. So uh -huh. I read books to, like, feel all the good, happy things. I'm like, why well, if it's sad enough, I don't want to read a sad book. You know, that's why I read, like, mangas. Because I feel like mm. they bring, like, they're so wholesome and they bring me joy. But when yeah. I, like, read, like, actual, I guess, like, textbooks. Textbooks. <laughs> books with text in them. Mm. I more so, like, <laughs> make it hurt. And so... <laughs> make it hurt? No, I'm like, ah! feel the hurt. Please. <laughs> I, I, mm, mm, now I'm all like, I'm thinking about the stories that I'm writing, and I'm all like, okay, so I feel like they're gonna be like make it hurt books. And so, like, maybe the problem gets solved at the end. Maybe this is just the way life is, and we just learn how to accept it. Fair. Um, oh, I totally forgot to mention the Venn diagram. The Venn diagram! <laughs> so, Olgin and I discovered on our book date on that, like, we date. have very different tastes in books. 
<laughs> but like but there's like some like overlap like, where like we do really like the same thing so like we've been trying to figure out what lies in the middle of our venn diagram of the yeah. books that we both like which is i think how the like reading challenge came about it's funny because like a lot of the books that we were like oh yeah i've read that like we've read a lot of the same books mm. but did not have the same like opinion of them. yes <laughs> I'm like, what is that word? Yes. <laughs> and so some books, <laughs> there's like a, a point where we're like, oh yeah, I read, she's like, have you read this book? And I'm like, yeah, I read that book, but I didn't, I didn't yeah. get through it. It was not it. Like, I could not. And so, <laughs> and then like right after I was like, have you read this book? And she's like, I could not. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. I'm really glad that you challenged me to read this because I think if I read it on my own, I would have DNF'd it. Oh my god! But like, I was like, no, okay, you told me to read it, so I'm gonna Ooh, finish it. I, it's so funny because like, as, when she recommended me the book, because like, I don't do really romance genres, so when she recommended me this book, I'm all like, listen, I gave her this whole speech where I'm all like, I, yeah. I do not finish books. She said she doesn't like chick lit. I, life is too short for bad books, right? That's what Lemony Snicket always told me. And that makes a lot, a lot of sense that I read the whole series of unfortunate events. Now I'm all like, make it hurt. Anyways, now that I've gotten a glimpse inside of myself, and you have too, um, I give her this whole spiel about like, I will not finish books that I don't like, but I will finish books that I don't like if someone recommends it to me. Mm -hmm. So I give her this whole spiel. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to like it. I probably won't, but I will finish it for you. <laughs> Spoiler alert! The irony in this. <laughs> loved it. Oh, I told her it's not chick lit. It's like it's and much. Said it was intelligent. It's like witty and like more intelligent and like like I feel like the characters are a lot more developed than like your standard like romance of like oh take me Highlander. Like it's not that. Like it's a smart Highlander. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's a line oh, from a book. book. Oh, never it's like Highlander series. You know, like the ones that have like Fabio on the oh, cover. It's Fabio, like, you know, oh. like really shirtless swimming. and like yeah. kind of like sweating. Like, what, what are you doing, Fabio? Yeah. So I, I was saying it's not like that. And she definitely should read it. So let yeah. a, let us know what you would rate book lovers and what you thought of it. Sorry, I just literally had an image flash in my mind. I'm like, what if we just like had dad bods on like the, the book covers? And I'm all like, I'm, I'm like, I would be that. more wholesome. I'm all like, it's probably like a really sweet guy, not very like yeah. dangerous, dangerous, like maybe dangerous, but not reckless. So I'm all like, oh, that seems like so sweet. And I kind of want to read that book now. I mean, maybe, honestly, uh, I feel like guys have bod. unrealistic body expectations too I actually, and I would be down with them like yeah. having the option like I feel like it's happened a lot more in like the female or female identifying world where like we're trying to say that like all bodies are beautiful and like be more accepting of like mm -hmm. you know like having like models who are like full figured and that sort of thing yeah. but you don't you still don't see that as like if you see a guy on a runway he's still got a six pack he's probably like yeah. six four you know Aww. like I like I like guys who are like a little bit wider and like they're just like a little bit fluffy. It's just like fluffy, a nice like a dad bod. Nice to cuddle with. I want abs. Ah! That's just like, oh, but the thing I is, but because okay. you have abs though. I feel like you have abs. It's because she um, goes to the gym. That's all I can say. I'm not gonna answer that for my own mental safety. But I ah! do believe that if you're expecting or wanting something out of the other person, that you should have it yourself. So Whoa. I wouldn't say I want a guy with abs unless I know that I'm like also working on my like peak physical performance because I feel like that's not fair maybe that's why I want a dad bod because I'm like if I have a guy with abs then I need to have you abs like you'll have to. and I need to like have like a two or a four pack and I feel like he's gonna make me work out and I'm like oh, I just like, want to just I genuinely like, generally me. see like fit guys like like on dating apps or whatever they always are like I want a girl who's active who's like into going to the gym like fit like they is, they seem to want yeah. what they have too which I think was respectful this is a total tangent but like there's been like these stories stories floating around where like these short guys are getting the surgery to like make themselves taller oh. like lengthen like this one guy was five six he got a surgery so that he could be i think it was like five eleven or six feet tall because he felt so insecure about being short and like he felt like it was like he, it they were like less masculine yeah. and then the second one came out the other day where like i think the guy was like five nine and now he like got the surgery to be like six one and i didn't realize how much it affects like the confidence of like men to like feel like because they're short they're not desirable or whatever. Wow. I stand a short king. Like everyone's tall to me, <laughs> you know. But I just, I felt so bad about that. Yeah, I don't know. Like I am under five feet. 
and I everybody's tall. <laughs> I like five eleven is like the highest that I will go. I feel like so after, like that's really pushing it. So yeah. I'm like, well, uh -huh. so if you're out there, listen, I don't need a six footer. Right. They're just. It's too hard to reach up there to kiss, you know? <laughs> I'm like, do I need, I need like a step ladder. <laughs> so like, there's like spontaneous kisses, right? And I don't so like I'm to like, hike, but I like to climb. Ah, <laughs> no, I, I, listen, I just told you I don't want a six pack. No, I, I I'm not, like, I don't want to be climbing. Shout out to the short kings. Olgeen is available. <laughs> uh, I'm like between 5'5 five five and 5'10. Five like, yeah. that's my range. That's fair. But anyways, yeah, that was a tangent. That was a tangent. Okay, back to book lovers. Uh, book lovers, I I really like that. It. I really. Would you so, rate it? I rate it a five star. Ah, Venn diagram. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I didn't get a five star. So. <laughs> well, no, but the whole point well, is that we're like, trying to figure out what it is. I like. did tell you, like, for the writing. Like, I didn't say for the romance. I didn't say for the story. I'm all, like, I love the writing. Yeah. Definitely. And I agree. Yeah. I didn't lie. I, for the writing style, five yeah. stars, for sure. Of but course. I feel like three and a half is not that far off from four. Um, which is what you I feel like if I thing. rate something like a three or under I'm like I probably didn't really like it but it's I like still so I don't know I'm really like anything below three or like four anything below four technically I think I'm I'm probably I'm like, a I, harsher like rater than you me I feel like okay that's what I'm saying like I, I like three and a half was like it, you know I like don't regret reading this like it was like a decent ride but like it wasn't my favorite like, if I hated a book, I would be, like, two. I two I feel like I'm a harsher reader. If I hated a book, I'm, like, half star. Oh, well, you mentioned <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I don't even know how I got through this book. It was, like, by some kind of miracle because I can't believe I finished. If it was, like, oh, below a three. Finish. Ah, right. I, like, for me, if it's, like, below a two, it's, like, I did not finish the book. You know, like, it wasn't worse. Be, back before I knew that I didn't have to finish books, I would finish books, and then I would rate it, like, half star. And I'm, all like, hmm. I made it through, and you should be grateful. Ah! Okay, so, okay, so book, book lovers, <laughs> and I don't know if there's like a glare. Anyway, this is kind of remarkable. I will totally sponsor this, but I mean, they didn't pay me Sponsor anything. us, I want one. Ah! <laughs> and so, I love remarkable, but I created a digital PDF, and so it's basically like I have like my book review that I wrote down and the progress and all that. You can take pictures. Now. All that jazz. And so. Yeah, all that jazz. All that jazz. It took me eight days, so like a week. Oh. And I technically could have finished it in, uh, technically it's like a week and a day. I could have finished it in a week, but I wanted to be on the plane and when I finished it. And <laughs> love that for you. I was going to be traveling anyways. And I'm like, what's the best place to read is on a plane or on the train or some kind of transportation. I feel that. It's like you're going on it's a, a journey, special place, but you're reading. on a journey. And so you're an adventure. Too fun. So I, the, the review that I wrote down, there's no spoilers, but the review that I wrote down was, Every line was so quotable. From the beginning to the end, there was such a whirlwind of emotions. I love that things were cliche and surprising. How I loved how the characters were developed, but stayed true to themselves. And so, a thing with character development that people are not doing right <laughs> is that like they think character development is completely changing the person, like doing a 180, and like, oh, they're a completely different person now because they, they went through this character arc. No. She's not passionate about this or anything. Development <laughs> is basically like you have a core truth to yourself. Like you know who you are, but you're changing your perception of things. Not that you're changing yourself entirely, but like your perception shifts. And so then your attitude shifts as well, but you're still who you are. And that's how you do character development. It's growth, not a completely different plant. But the same plant growing and blooming in the situation and becoming more beautiful as they see the world. I was going to say more beautiful, but I'm like, sometimes character development is not. It's true. Sometimes it's for the worst. It's, yeah. And so I'm like, okay, so you grow in the worst ways. <laughs> and that's still okay. I don't know why. But I'm like, at that's least. That's how villains are created. I feel like you're being, like, it's a real person. Like, not everyone's going to grow in a way that you want them to or in a way that you expect. They're going to grow as they like from to their environment and, and the choices like, they make yeah and, so it's just yeah. like it's more realistic that way and i'm like do not give me like a fluffy character who i don't know give me the real character and like how they really are like i want a true person i mean but anyways <laughs> which is why she always likes the bad guy <laughs> 
if we're not reading books for like um character development then it's fine i mean just at least it, just tell me that yes as long as i expect it i'm like okay this is gonna be a whole lot of fluff mm-hmm. which is totally fine so would you say that book lovers is fluffy i would say that it there are parts that were fluffy but then there are also parts that were so real where mm-hmm. i'm like yeah i totally feel that like yeah like things are not falling apart but like barely holding on together and you're like doing your best to like to just like manage everything that's coming your way even though like you're probably dying on the inside so it's just that like i i can fix this things are gonna go well i can do this like I, this is something that i'm capable of doing but also realizing like i can't control everything and just like letting it go and like being feeling free to break down and so I like that. I think it was fluffy in that part where it's all like, is this yeah. giving too much? No, I don't think so. Okay, so then it, like some characters were like, okay, I can break down and I can like be a person and mm-hmm. I don't have to be on autopilot or like shove my emotions to make everything right. And so it was really nice. Like a book that lets you feel when you haven't felt in so long. And so I really loved it. I was all like, I mean, the doom and gloom, I was all for. But then when it was like fluffy, I was like, ah. And so like I read it on my Kindle because like if you're not reading on Kindle, <laughs> I just mean, have probably everyone's doing it, right? <laughs> It's so funny because you would literally send me like text updates. I, it, I have like real time commentary from oh, Loki and while she's I... reading. Oh, when we like met up to like read at T Pop. We <laughs> read up to like start both our books at T Pop. Yeah. And I, I knew that she was gonna like it. I guess. Of the I giggled. Listen, the lady <laughs> next to me on the plane, I she, I had like little earplugs then. <laughs> Once again, not sponsored. Loops. Amazing. <laughs> Anyways, I had them in and I was like literally like laughing and I would like gasp and like since it was towards the end, the, I my heart, I had to stop reading my heart. I, oh no. I wanted to cry. I literally had no to where, like, this is where I started to cry. This is when joy came back. This is when my heart broke again. And so, oh. so I am, like, literally, like, gasping and crying. And I'm, uh, like, feeling all the emotions. And so it was, like, ah! And so there's that sound again. And so it was so good. And so the lady next to me, like, after I was done reading and, like, we were talking, she's all like, what, so what were you reading? And I'm like, girl, don't even get me started. <laughs> I love that she asked. It's, like, the best. Uh, I think it's basically because of my reactions. Because yeah. I was, like, feeling all the things. And I do not mask my reactions. Like, Melissa knows. Like, yeah, I was at t I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> and I'm just like, I just, when a book makes you, like, react audibly, you yeah. know it's good. Yeah. Like you just know. It's affecting you. Like to me, great art affects you in some way. Yeah. So if you're yeah. like getting up and you're walking, like you're pacing up and down, like no, no, no. <laughs> I'm like this is not happening. And like, <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh, that just happened. I am clutching my pearls. So and when someone says something and you like laugh, it's like I'm it's like I was in the conversation with you guys. Like I was there. I was hearing it happen. And I was like doing the appropriate response. I lol would I, I laughed out loud. <laughs> like like you were sitting next to me and you just said it. And I was like, huh. And so just, like, having the book pull certain emotions out of you, I'm all, like, that's, yeah. that's what good writing is. I love that. Wait, and so... Do I, do I want to change my recommendation for you? Oh, okay, I would say that this book was very cliche, but not in a way that was, like, super noticeable. I feel like it, it kind of, like, the idea was to, like, take the cliche and turn it on its head. Yeah, because I was, I read this this part and then like I had to like get up and make breakfast because I was reading this book in bed like when I woke up when I went to sleep like this book was in my hand all the time and so I remember I read this part and I was like oh my gosh that was so fun and then as I'm getting breakfast ready I'm like did they just like do a cliche and I just didn't know that she just like like, right (laughs) over my head because like when you read the same story over and over and over again you're like okay like I already know how this is gonna happen I'm already like I can predict it yeah but then it was just all like uh, like this one scene. They like slipped it in. <laughs> I know. I'm all like, the thing is, you're getting so caught up like in the character, like the way that they're thinking and like what they're doing. So they're like they're they're like reading this thing and they're like walking, and then you're like so focused on that, like something cliche happens. You're not even. You're like, wait, no, like what's happening? That's like, give me right. more. I mean, I'm all like, what is happening? I don't know. It's just like all the cliche things I did not even notice, and so because I was just like so in tune with the character 
like they were so related l relatable to me that i'm like this is me like i am this character like in a certain sense like yeah. i understand on a deeper level like this character like i know them so well and now i'm thinking about it i'm like juliet i'm all like eh. <laughs> see I, I that's what i look for in a book i like if i don't connect to the main character in that way yeah it's hard for me to really enjoy the journey me i find side characters so <laughs> that's fair I, I definitely think that i'm not the type to like fall in love with the side characters i, I do like them and appreciate them yeah. and I think the story is much better if like they're fleshed out yeah. as well but like I need to care a lot about the main character otherwise mm -hmm. I'm character <laughs> otherwise I'm like not really into the story yeah I would say I mean flashing back to shatter shatter me because I read it right after book lovers I did not I love the the mind of the main character mm -hmm. in the beginning and then I like switched off to another character because I'm like, ooh, I want to know more about them. And they're like, off turn the beginning. A uh, side character too. And so I'm all like, I, I, I want more of you, and I just wanna, I wanna read more of you. But anyway, I know the character she's talking about. The I, the, I would say that the the author did a good job at writing like novellas. Is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. With um Sorry, side for side side characters, yeah, because oh, I think nice. almost all the side characters, a lot of the side characters got their own like novella. Oh, that's cool. I um, said that I will never read them, but I really respect. I them. it is on my hold list on at the library. I'm nice. going to read it. I can't wait. I'm excited. But back to the story. The story I you you never told us what you rated it. I rated it five. Did I not say five? Stars! Five stars. I think you said it off camera. It's a, oh, I said it off this camera. This is officially a Venn diagram. A Venn diagram moment. <laughs> yes, we met the our, our sweet sweet middle spot. <laughs> this is kind of creative Venn diagram. No, uh, yeah, yeah, it's in there. It's, it's right there. It's there, guys. Just Anyways. don't worry about it. It's there. So I really liked all of the characters, and I think what I liked most about this book is that I thought I had it figured out. Like the main character thought she had it figured out. I also thought I had to figure it out, so I'm like, I already know how this is gonna end. And it doesn't end that way. <laughs> I was like, ah. Is it the best? <laughs> I hate when I predict exactly what's gonna happen. Like, throw me a little bit. Like, don't I, throw me so much that I'm like, I, where'd that come from? I, I thought, I'm all like, this has to be, like, there's no other logical explanation. And then, like, at the end, where I'm all like, I want so badly to be enough. <laughs> Hashtag quote. Anyways, <laughs> and I was like, yes, <laughs> I want this. And this is going to happen. Like, this always happens. And it didn't happen. <laughs> and oh, I was like, I, 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 this is where I cried, right? And I'm just crying. And then, like, you know, the ending came and I was crying. And so I'm not going to tell you if it was tears of joy or sorrow, but I cried. <laughs> Anyways, I did have make a note that I loved that I'm from the what coast am I from? The East Coast. I'm from the East Coast, and there's we're from this the part. Same coast. We are from the same coast. <laughs> there's this part where they're like they were in this like supermarket, and I was like, ah, oh, I know that supermarket. Yeah. So it was like relatable on like levels. I love I'm it. On, like real world things. Okay, now for the for for, for the ending mark, oh, we right. have to pick our next book. Ah. So that we can see what else lies in our Venn diagram. I... Do you want to go first or do you want me to go I first? feel like I'm only picking books that I like really liked. That's the point. <laughs> and so I feel like I'm not considering you at all. I, you know, you can consider me a little bit, but I feel like the point is uh... to see of the things that you really like, if I can really like them too. Okay. I'm trying really... to figure out our... I did over. like this book. I feel like it reminds me a little bit of book lovers, but in a completely fantasy world. Ooh, it sounds good already. And so the thing is that it's like, I I found it intelligent because I was like, whoa, I would never think about that. This seems like a little high class, high tech, right? So far, we're three for three. Ooh. But also, it's 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 one in a series like i think it's a trilogy okay is it but is it the first in the series it's the first of the okay. series cool, cool, where cool. i i usually fall in love with the first book which is why i mean come on why would you continue if you didn't fall in love with the first book Fair. now i'm thinking of another book recommendation but i'm like uh, that's awesome give, give me two and then i can pick no no, pick no but one. i like the i like the gag one <laughs> so i i had like two books picked out the first one i really liked the second one i'm all like that would just be fun just to be fun but now I'm like thinking of like another series where I'm like, huh, that was also oh, intelligent so too. There's three options? I can think of three options. Ah, what okay. You, whatever whatever you want to do. You can like pick the one or you can give me options. I can I, I can do three. I like, but the thing is that I didn't finish a trilogy on the one that I'm going to recommend. Only because the book didn't come out yet. 
It wasn't published yet. I think it's published now. I should go back and find it. Or maybe I'll just get it at Barnes and Noble. I won't be doing I, this that was a regular. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, why like, well, you're gonna ever do this again? Yourself? Anyways, <laughs> for, my, for, for my wallet. <laughs> way too much money. And I was like, I'm never gonna go out on another book date. And look at me now. Where was I? Okay, right, so your three recommendations. recommendations. My three recommendations, my top two would be the Girl of Fire and Thorn. Ah, uh, you have recommended this to me when we were at the library or when we were at Barnes. Yes, I don't remember the author because I don't keep talking about. I think it's authors. Ray Carson. Hey, you know she's better than me. I just keep track of books. I think. Well, I'll just we'll, we'll put all of them right here. Yeah. Um. The second one would be this is the one that I thought of just now. It would be Alive, by. This one's really familiar. By this a, a man, a, a male author. <laughs> Hey, it's funny because that would be a challenge because I hardly ever read books I, by men. No, yeah. I realized when I was reading, I'm all like, his name is Scott something. Okay, or maybe his last name is Scott. Okay, something with a Scott. <laughs> and I was like, I yeah, I didn't think. I don't know why it shocked me. A guy read, um, a guy wrote this, but I was like, I was shocked. Anyways, it's probably because I read Ender's Game, and I'm mm. all like, oh, nerd, and so. <laughs> Uh, for nerds. <laughs> I'm a nerd. Queen of the nerds. Queen of the nerds. I was dubbed that in high school. Oh my gosh. One of our YouTube names was like nerds and geeks. <laughs> geeks and nerds. Geeks and nerds. Ooh. Alphabetical order because I'm a nerd. <laughs> I, it does sound better. Like when I said nerds and geeks, I'm like, it doesn't flow as well. You're probably geeks and nerds that flow better. That show. Oh, no, I was thinking of the show. Geeks and freaks. Uh, freaks and geeks, whatever it is. I don't know. Anyway, okay, okay, so that's and two. What's two. The, the third recommendation is <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, the Vampire Hunter. <gasps> oh, fun. Okay. Wait, so I know, I think I know what Girl of Fire and Thorns is about. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. Sounds cool. What's Alive about? Alive is about these, um, I guess they're like teenagers. Okay. They could be classified as teenagers. They woke up in a... And basically, they don't know who they are, where they are, or like what they are doing. So they're like wandering around, the and they're trying to like find out answers. Interesting. And so, do oh, they such, find answers? That's I such feel a like tough choice. You find more questions first, and then you're like, it's like you're. you're no, no, going you, you on told me enough. Them. You told me enough. Okay. I'm intrigued. I actually don't know which one I would pick. Yeah, right. That's why I'm like, oh, this is probably something you might like. Okay. Pick um, one, two, or three. What? And it's not in the order that you said it. I've like scrambled them around. Oh. So pick one, two, or three. I, I just want you to read a live, to be honest. Okay. I'll read a live. But then I feel like you should read Abe next. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We will revisit that <laughs> on the next video. Okay, so my three recommendations for you. Yeah. I. Persuasion wasn't on my list until we like talked about it earlier and I was like, my glasses. I don't know if you're a fan of Jane Austen, but I swear. Um, I'll pitch you though. So uh persuasion centers around and don't watch the movie on Netflix. It's horrid. Um it centers on this uh girl named Anne. It's like uh -huh. still in the same like time period basically yeah. as Pride and Prejudice. Um but Wait, she's like you telling me about this before. About persuasion? Isn't it the one with the matchmaker? No, it's not the one with the matchmaker. No, that's Emma. Yeah. Different Jane Austen book. Um, but this one, um, Anne is like, I think the middle of three sisters mm -hmm. um, who live with her father. And she's like, you know, like a really meek and like humble person and mm -hmm. like really sweet. Um, and it's basically her journey to like rediscovering herself and like self-actualization and like coming of age um yeah but she's like already of age so it's like you know it's like a little bit more of an adult and mature than that um it's not like ya and then my second one is kind of i i would classify it in the vein of book lovers um but it's it's not the same of like turning a cliche on its head uh -huh. it's called meet me in the margins and I actually read it before Book Lovers, and it's the reason why I read Book Lovers, because I was hoping that Book Lovers would be like this book. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it centers on, like, two writers. 
So I think it'd be really interesting for you to read Ooh, where you're at right yeah, now. Yeah. Olgin is a writer and she writes amazing things and she's like revisiting some of the things that she's written before too, uh, which is really cool. Yeah. I'm like, did you, I'm like, have you read things I've written? You've read like little poetry books. Yeah, little pieces. Um, yeah. I still have to read your horror. I need to get into a good No, 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 no. It's, it's literally, I read it and I'm like, nothing happened, but I know what's going to happen. What was going to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so don't read it. I'm going to probably... Right. I actually have like a different story that you could read. Okay. Today. Send it to me. I have it now. I I'm like, I'm not gonna read it on either. camera, but I mean of course not. <laughs> okay. like, like, off camera. I'm not, like, imagine. I will be her camera. I'll be like watching for every reaction. Oh, I this my is something own personal I do. Truman show. <laughs> this is what I do when people like read things I write. I like look at their faces and I'm like, I wonder what part they're reading. <laughs> and I try to like see like if they if I entice the emotion that I wanted to. Yeah. As they read it. Oh, I just thought of another book. Can uh, I give you four recommendations? Because uh, I just realized... I only remember... Okay, you only gave me two so far. Yeah, I've only given you two, and I'm just realizing that all three of them are, like, more in the romance vein. <laughs> so I want to give you an option that's, like, not heavy romance. Okay, so the third one that's still kind of romance, but, like, mm -hmm. this is probably one of my favorite books ever, like, full-on five-star. Mm -hmm. It's called The Soulmate Equation uh -huh. by Christina Lauren, which is, like, this writing duo. The soulmate equation. By the way, um, I'm on Goodreads adding this to my list of like want to read. Look her I, up I, and add her as a friend. I'm not being distracted, guys. I, I swear I'm paying attention. And I'm <laughs> She's doing millennial. I get to But the soulmate equation, like the premise of that the is like it's this um, single mom. I think she's in her like mid to late 30s. And uh, she's a mathematician slash like data scientist. And her best friend is a romance novelist. Um, and her best friend convinces her to like send off for like this new dating thing that basically uses your DNA to match you with people. No, oh, that feels weird. It's literally called the soulmate equation. I know. Well, the idea is that like a certain percentage of our compatibility comes from like chemical processes within our body and things like that. Uh -huh. um, anyways, that's all I'm gonna tell you about it. Oh gosh. But it's like very smart, witty like, writing. It's not available in the library, so I'll probably have to go somewhere to get it. I own it. it. Hey, <laughs> see that? This is why you should have friends who love books. Uh -huh. uh, okay, and then the fourth one option is like not a heavy romance one. It's more of like a adventure book. Good um, and it's called Graceling. <laughs> I I did not make. <laughs> I, Have you read that before? I started to. It's not. It's when I didn't finish. No way. I mean, I can go back for it. Well, no. Here's the thing. It's like one of your options, so you don't have to read it. But like, I mean, you thought of it because like there is a little bit of like the politicalness that you find in like your dystopian novels. But like, it's a fantasy, so mm -hmm. it's like world building, like a very strong main character. Oh. But it is like more YA ish. Yeah. So. Anyways. Who's the author for that one? I want to say Kristen Kishore. I'm just trying to like wrong. cover that I don't know how to spell Gracely. Oh, it's just Grace and then L I N G. Ah! Oh, that makes more sense. Yeah, Kristen Kishore. Shall this is one of, this uh, was like a five star read the first time I read it in high school. school. Really? I shoved it under. <laughs> That's hilarious. Wait, uh, how much, do you remember how much of it you read? I can find Probably because I was reading the physical copy. Oh. But I will. Interesting. But it was seven years ago. And who well, knows it's so funny because like I one of my favorite booktubers, I want to say it was Sarah Carroll, or maybe it was Haley Pham, read it and also didn't like it. And I was like, are you kidding me? So it's not an hour Venn diagram either. So like, maybe don't pick that one. I, <laughs> but I, I wanted to give you like a non-romance I kind of want to know if I will still If you feel the it. same about it. Yeah. Well, you can read that one when I read the Abraham Lincoln. Oh my god. <laughs> anyways, those are your options. I kind of want to reread it live, to be honest. I'm all like, I was You can reread it live after you finish this one, like before. Because I'm definitely uh, rereading book bloggers. <laughs> But yeah, I, just, I think yeah. those are all five star reads for me, so. Okay. Like, if I picked through you, I would probably say the soulmate equation. Oh, so then you'd have to, like, give it to me. It's fine. Um, but but yeah, uh, you're welcome to pick any of those. I guess I can read the soulmate equation. <gasps> I didn't ask Wait, you, though. Like, how do you feel about, like, spicy books? So, book lovers wasn't spicy? I don't remember. 
I well they they spicy things happen. I okay. just skipped over it. Okay, perfect. You can just skip over it. Yeah. Because I do feel like th that was one um like Haley Pham like she also skips over those scenes and she said something that I thought was really interesting. It's like if the book isn't good enough without all those scenes, then you didn't write the romance well. Mm -hmm. And I think that this book is like totally great without those scenes. Mm -hmm. So like you should be able to skip over them and be fine. Yeah, it's not like Games of Thrones or anything. Never read those, but I can believe that it's full of spice. <laughs> what I heard is that like um, someone I knew was watching Games of Thrones and then they're like, I just like skip over all the spicy bits. And then I was like telling someone that and then they were like, no, that's where they like have a bunch of dialogue that you need to know. And I'm like, oh. So it's not just pillow talk? What? And I'm like, you know, I probably can't watch it then. Yeah. I think it's like the first episode, I was all like, you killed a boy after doing what? I'm going to be honest, I've never seen the show except for the scenes with Jason Momoa. And I just looked those up on YouTube because it's Jason Momoa. I mean, it's Jason Momoa. Yeah. Okay, so we have our next books to read to see if they fit into the Venn diagram. Venn diagram. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for joining me, Olgeen. Hopefully this will be a long series and we'll keep doing this because I think it's fun. It is fun. Yeah. I will say that before me and Melissa had a book date, I had been so discouraged because my reading challenges on Goodreads were like zero, zero, zero. Oh, and then no. I never met them like for like the past two years and I'm all like, do I just hate books now? No. And so going on this book date with Melissa like reignited my love for books and I read two books in like two weeks. No more books love. Yeah. Which are so real. See, they're so real. It's because I technically I needed to get out of the murder mystery genre because I read that That's for right. like three years or something. You know what? The next one you should like recommend me a murder mystery because I tend to hate them. Or not hate them, but I just don't I already have it. Okay, cool. I, <laughs> That's your next I, time. You'll have to tune in to the end of the next video to find out. Bye. But I love you. I see you. And I hope you have an amazing day. You too. You too. I'm sorry. This is why I'm awkward. I'm a geek. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a geek. Perfect. Oh Bye. My gosh. I So I still have it because I want to take it to like a computer shop or something. Yeah, uh, make a nerd look at it. So I always I do. I am a nerd. I look at it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> a nerd for that specific theme. Okay. A computer nerd. A tech uh, nerd. He nerd. I, I, a nerdier nerd. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I mean, there's like different categories of nerds. That's true. Like you can't be an all-encompassing nerd. You can be like the tech nerd. I like I like the, to think that like I'm nerd light in a lot of different categories though. And I mean, then you just have like the one that you're like, like yeah, super yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like the passionate deep dive about. nerds, yeah. the yeah. passionate nerds. Well, as I say, like I feel like, like the difference between nerds and geeks, right? Or like nerds tend to like it's like the connotation is that they're smarter, really? whereas like geeks are like awkward, awkward, and like ah. but like into like really niche stuff. I am a geek. I thought I was a nerd. <laughs> I mean, that's my definition. <laughs> like I don't know if that's like you know the standard definition, but that's the way I always I thought of it. I, I guess, like, nerds could be, like, book smart, but I don't know, like, I feel like I'm a geek because I'm smart in fandoms, and so, uh, that's what's geeky to me. <laughs> like, I always think of, like, people who are, like, obsessed with Star Wars, geeks. Oh, my like, People gosh. who are, like, super into tech and, like, know all about it, I think we're nerds, because it's, like, yeah. more of a learned skill. Ooh. Versus, like, <laughs> Anyways. Um, just because I didn't pay to, like, get this information doesn't mean it's not any less Sometimes valuable. Sometimes geeks pay. I mean, yeah, I guess you're figuring. I don't know why the rain went there. That's where it went. But anyways, I, I've been caught in otaku. No, actually, yeah, no, weeb. And so, yeah, definitely it's like an anime nerd. I'm sorry, an anime oh, geek. Weeb. Yeah, and I- Is that like a take on dweeb? Dude, now I feel offended. No, I'm wondering. Like, I'm not, I I'm, sorry, I'm, not I'm not saying that an Aki accusatory way i'm like genuinely asking i know but i'm not now i'm like thinking i don't know where it came from like an otaku is like a japanese word and i don't know where weeb came from so it has to like look i'm gonna google it and then i'll just put it right <laughs> <laughs> anyways okay i'm gonna start this over ah!